I'd like to do a collection update, a state of the watch collection. I have just crossed the 100,000 subscriber threshold. So I want to thank you for helping me get to this point. And I'd like to take the opportunity to document what's in the collection as I've just crossed this milestone because I'm sure in future years, my collection will look completely different. And in my opinion, that's not a bad thing. If you are new to the channel and you've never really seen many of my videos, I love flipping. I love changing up the rotation. I have no problems in doing that. I have no problems in selling amazing grail level, just outstanding watches uh, because you know what? I go right into other amazing, excellent grail level watches and there will be more after that. So I like the change. I like trying a number of different watches. I find this a very fun way to go about this hobby. And I try not to take myself too seriously as I do it. I know we, we kind of, I don't know, have, have uh, the ability to get a little bit stuffy, a little bit serious, a little bit too logical. So I try not to do that myself. That being said, let's go through the 10 watches in my watch collection at the moment. And I like to do these collection updates right before I change things up and I sell pieces, add pieces, consolidate or expand. So a change is right around the corner for me. But right now, let's start, uh, let's start this collection update and we will go in alphabetical order. So the first one is an Aquastar Deep Star 2 Vintage Silver Star. That is a lot of stars in the name of this retro uh, this retro brand. I really like the 37 millimeter case. This is surprising on wrist. It has surprising presence. And I love the grains of rice bracelet. I love the silver dial. I love the detail work, the crispness. I love the tropic strap. This one is a very fun piece that I enjoy wearing. Now we also have a ball. This is the engineer Marvelite three Taiwan limited edition. So this one was limited to 130 pieces and was released in the Taiwanese market. And it, I mean, it's a very solid watch. It is crafted out of 904L stainless steel. It has an excellent bracelet. It has a COSC certified movement. And I love the tritium tubes. It's very legible in low light, but I will say it's a touch gimmicky on the dial seeing Taiwan spelled out in the tritium tubes. Uh, but it's a very nice watch, and I do enjoy wearing this one. Now, here we come to two different watches that are my collection favorites. I hold them in the highest regard. I like wearing them the most. I have the most fun with these watches. And the first one is the Breitling Datora 42 on the OEM bracelet. Adding the Premier bracelet was a game changer for this. It really completed the look and took it up to the next level. I love this triple date moon phase with the chronograph. I love the details on this salmon dial. Uh, oh my goodness, this one is just so much fun to wear. And uh, again, a top two favorite in my watch collection. The next one, the other favorite, is the Pasha de Cartier C Timer Black Dial. This is an older generation, and I find it to be the perfect size. It has the perfect uh, bracelet, the weight, the dial, the loom, the tactile feel, the fact that it is a Gerald Genta design. I find this underrated. And if I had to pick a favorite, I think it would be the Pasha. Uh, some days it's the Detora, but most days it's the Pasha. It is such a great piece. Now, continuing alphabetically, I have a couple different Rolex models. Uh, stay with me. I know not everybody likes Rolex, but the first one is a stainless steel Sky Dweller bright black dial on the Jubilee bracelet. And the Jubilee bracelet is one of the most comfortable bracelets on the market. And I wasn't so sure about it when I first saw the Jubilee paired with a Sky Dweller online. But I've got to say in person, I'm glad I went Jubilee over Oyster. It's a little bit less common. And then the pairing of Jubilee with a fluted bezel, it's just a Rolex recipe that I don't like to mess with. So I really like this. It is an annual calendar GMT. Yes, it is complicated, but it is very robust. And I could take it in just about any, you know, any situation that I would wear the next watch, which is my Rolex Hulk. This Submariner has been three years in the watch collection this month, and I find it the easiest watch to wear. 
It's thin. It has a great bracelet. It has great bezel action and loom and accuracy. And then not to mention the fact that it is just straight up a pretty watch. And I find it fun that it has the Rolex brand color and it's done in a dynamic way. So I really love wearing the Hulk. These, these are my two Rolex models at the moment. Now, continuing, we have a couple Seiko models. One is the SRPC-13 Recraft Limited Edition. This one I don't wear very often. Most days, it's sitting in the gyroscopic watch winder in the background of some of my videos just for a little bit of ambiance, but my father gave this to me, so it means a lot uh, to me. It's something that I will never let go of and will eventually go down to one of my children at some point, uh, provided one of them has at least a little bit of interest in watches. So uh, this one is pretty uncommon. It's, it's a limited edition. It has sold out. It has been discontinued. And the last time I checked, I think there were only two different examples for sale globally. So it is a pretty uncommon, uh, pretty uncommon watch at this point. Now we have a SLA 059 <laughs> red or burgundy dialed Marine Master 300 with an exquisite say high hob print on this uncommon dial color. I love the fact that we have a partially loomed ceramic bezel insert. It's a tall professional diver. And the ridiculous part is the fact that Seiko has included matching cuff links for this USA market exclusive. And yes, I have worn this with cufflinks with a suit and I've worn this chunky watch that really can't fit under a dress cuff. And I looked absolutely ridiculous, but I felt like a million bucks. It was so silly, but so much fun. So this one is it's just a great piece. Now we have one other S brand watch. This one is the Swatch MoMA Starry Night. And like many people around the world, I love the Starry Night painting by Vincent van Gogh. And, uh, you know, if you learn a little bit about him and what he was going through in his life in the late 1800s when he painted this, it has a little bit more meaning. So it has some meaning to me personally, but the best part about this is the fact that it is so inexpensive and fun. And whenever I go to a local watch collector meetup uh, with the Horological Society of Utah, a lot of people like to wear their most expensive piece or their biggest flex or most recent purchase. And I've done that from time to time. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but you see a lot of heavy hitters at most meetings. And so I like to come with the starry night. I wore this to our big year end celebration. So I don't know, maybe it's just the contrarian in me. But when people are showing off their uh, most you know, prideful watches, the, the watches that they're the most proud of, I come showing <laughs> a swatch starry night on wrist. And I think that's kind of fun. Now, lastly, we have the Tudor Black Bay Chrono Panda. This one is a lovely size. It has uh, the best hand design probably out of any dive watch. And yes, I will die on that hill. The snowflake hands are amazing. I like the loom. I like the retro design. And I don't know, this one is the one that I go to when I'm not exactly sure what I want to wear that day. This one is a grab and go piece that matches any outfit and can go in just about any situation. It's a really solid piece. So that being said, those are my 10 watches at the moment that I wear, uh, that I use in rotation. I do have favorites. I do have a couple that I don't wear so often, but they all get wrist time. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this collection, but truth be told, it's a little bit heavy. I like being between the six and eight watch mark. This one is 10. I can usually go up to a dozen before I feel fatigued and I want to pare down and I consolidate and I upgrade and I have fun doing that. So what is next for me? I have changes around the corner here. Well, the two most likely to happen the soonest, one is a Grand Seiko. I am Grand Seiko less at the moment and I really want a 44GS case so I have my eye on a model. I think that one is the next watch up on the docket. Uh, but I also, I've had a long-term goal of owning a full precious metal watch. And I am partial to yellow gold myself. So I'd like to do that. I think I'm, I think I'm finally ready to make that type of big move 
So I think I'm going to be doing that here soon. And the fact that I've just recently crossed 100,000 subscribers. So it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a big year for me, my collecting journey, my channel. Uh, I think this is the year that I go full precious metal and I'm looking at a couple different pieces <laughs> that would be a very long-term purchase. This, uh, this edition would not be one that I willy-nilly uh, buy and sell within a few years. No, this one would be for the long haul. So uh, expect that to happen later this year along with Grand Seiko. I would love more Cartier. I would love more Breitling. I would love JLC or Zenith or an Omega. Uh, I'd just like to change it up, have fun, not take myself too seriously, not take the hobby too seriously, uh, just the way that I enjoy doing this. So let me know what you think. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch today and also to help me get to uh, this point, 100,000 subscribers. It really means a lot. So have a great day. I'll see you guys next time.